spot today. Oh gosh, a fine <laughs> Grand High Pooba. Are you introducing <laughs> us today then, Grand High Pooba? That's right. That's right. The Grand High Pooba. I'm riding high on the wave of just coming off of an excellent talk today at the Henderson Library's Paseo Verde Library, where we talked all about the world building and all of the building blocks within that. So welcome to our impromptu version of Spilling Ink this week. We're live on Facebook. And as always, my wonderful co-host, the Jason Lavelle is joining me. Hey, Jason. That's right. You know, it, we say impromptu, but really our show every week is at eight o'clock on Saturdays, isn't it? <laughs> so so we, this may be impromptu for us because we were going to take the day off. But uh, for you guys, this might be right on schedule. So I, I think that that's good. I also have my my cat is uh, hanging out here because there you go. Hello, Leah. She only comes out when I'm in here trying to work. Uh, but yes. Yeah, so Katie has been oh yep hello um, has <laughs> yeah. been has been presenting all day and she's feeling super good about it so she wanted to get on here and capitalize on some of that energy and and look at her she looks amazing you look great tonight katie you brushed your hair and everything i, I like it <laughs> i didn't my my hair looks like shh, crap it's been a week since i've shaved my head so i'm i'm starting to feel kind of fuzzy but all I have to do tomorrow is work at the post office, so I'm I'm not cutting my hair for them. Now, what are you doing at the post office? I thought I thought you worked at the vet. I do, I do, but you know, it's it's hard to make a living when you're an artist. So I I do bunches of stuff, but no, I I uh, I deliver packages on uh, on Sundays and federal holidays for the for the post office because of all the uh, Amazon Prime stuff that goes through on Sundays. So. Ah. Okay. So that's what that's what I do. It's not the I don't know. It's not a, an amazing job, but it pays pretty good. So okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? We all have to do those side gigs. You know, some people are Uber and Lyft drivers as their side gig. Some people deliver for Amazon as their side gig. I'm kind of trying to make a porn? side gig out of doing these presentations. Oh, I thought you I thought know? you were gonna say porn. I thought that was your side gig. No, no, they pay me to put my clothes on. So. <laughs> <laughs> No, and I, I think that your uh, presentation business is going to be very cool. In fact, if you guys didn't know, Katie is actually going to be flying out to Michigan this summer to do some presentations at uh, in my in my town and at our at our library. So she's going to be teaching people about uh, about how to to get their ideas onto paper and and not suck at it. So we're we're excited for that. It's going to be very cool. And you know, it's it's fun to come up with these presentations too, because you know, as writers, we learn as we go, and you learn a lot of what works and what doesn't work. And being able to share those things with the next generation of writers, it feels really good because you know that you're helping them to avoid some of those stumbling blocks that maybe you went through, or to clarify better ways of doing things that maybe they thought of trying but weren't ready to jump the gun on so it's really fun and I love interacting with people and hearing their questions and trying to come up with not necessarily the answers all the time but new methods for them to use that might help them in their writing man you are such a humanitarian you are you are pretty much saving the world one speech at a time. I, 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 <laughs> I thought you were going to say those who can't do teach. <laughs> oh, damn. That would be, that'd be pretty harsh, even for me. <laughs> uh, that being said, maybe I should start teaching because I, I feel like I could teach pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> so so we actually wanted to teach something today. I don't know if we're just teaching or talking. So if if you guys listen to it, you can decide if we're we're teaching or talking. Hey, wait a second. Are we are we actually on Facebook right now, Katie? I believe we, so, yeah. Are we on there? It where, says you are on Facebook. So where, yes. Where are Joe and Rebecca and JD and everybody? I I I, I see nobody. Guys. Yeah, holiday weekend, maybe people are not on guys. Facebook, maybe they're actually doing things in real life. No, the most important thing you guys could be doing is spending time with Katie and Jason. Excuse me, the Jason and the Grand High Pooba. Where do you think the Pooba thing comes from? I don't know, but I've used it for so long. It's just become part of my my speech. Well, but you're you're Miss Research, though. I mean, you you know this shit. You just spent hours last night researching the Rose Wars or the War of the Roses. Oh my right? god! Wait, wait. Tell us why. What is the War of the Roses, and why were you, were you researching this? 
<laughs> other than other than you hate sleep. Okay, well, as as authors, I think we can all understand the the way that you fall down the rabbit hole when you do research for your stories. Well, as I was presenting today on world building, one of my key points was that a lot of authors take from history or from mythology and twist it to make it their own. And one of the best examples of that is Game of Thrones and George R. R. Martin using the War of the Roses. And he wasn't um, secretive about that either. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna look at the War of the Roses. I'm gonna break it down and I wanna see where these elements are coming from. And sure enough, they do line up. They absolutely line up. And you can even see character parallels between certain historical figures that were involved in the War of the Roses versus the Game of Thrones houses and how the families are all fighting amongst each other and trying to undercut each other all to gain the throne. Now, what and about so, the dragons? Where do the, where do... Those are fantasy, but uh, you know, that's, that's where you take it and you twist it. So that's where it becomes fantasy. I was hoping that that was a real thing that I just hadn't learned about yet. <laughs> well, and, and even the house names were, were kind of similar. So in the War of the Roses, you have the Lancasters and the um, the Yorks as the two primary households that are fighting. And then in Game of Thrones, you have the Lannisters and the Starks. So I mean, there's very, very close similarities between them. And so, yeah, I was up all night last night just so that I could make this point in the presentation, <laughs> researching the War of the Roses so that I knew every tiny bit that I could about this <laughs> so that I could confidently answer questions should anybody ask them after I had mentioned it. Did anyone ask you a question about the War of the Roses? No. No? Oh, man, what, what a letdown. <laughs> I had six pages of notes, and I was like, I'm ready. I can do this. Somebody ask a question. <laughs> well, I, I want to know. Tell me about the War of the Roses. Like, very briefly, not six pages worth. Like, maybe, like, um, six sentences worth. Okay. Um, essentially, you've got the Plantagenet house, which is the primary house. This is on Earth, right? Is it this yes. is where we're talking about? Okay. That is ruling, and we're talking about. I think it's from the 12th century to the 14th century is when the house became and divided, and then fought with each other. And basically, it has to do with one king had a bunch of kids, and his heir, the oldest in line, died before the king did. And because of the line of succession, his child, the the one that died, was next in line for the throne, not the brothers. And so you created all of these other potential claims to the throne. And as there was um, issues going on and fights going on between um, d civil wars, basically, uh, between different areas of the country, you had different people claiming the throne or trying to claim the throne. And so you've got basically the Lancaster house formed out of one of the brothers that didn't become the king and the York house formed out of another set of brother or it, the fourth brother, I think, of the king that didn't become the king. And each of them is attempting to claim the throne. And it caused all kinds of fighting, all kinds of civil wars. And ultimately, it ends up with both of the male lines, the Yorks and the Lancasters, being killed off. And ultimately, one of their descendants, Henry Tudor, marrying a descendant from the York family and creating the Tudor family hey the Tudors. that's a show and then that's how you got the Tudors. so that's why I know I'm that name. The Thrones, that's why i'm thinking the targaryen house and either the starks or the lannisters have to combine at some point to create some new family name but you can see the parallels because the way everyone's vying for the throne and everyone's trying to sabotage each other and create alliances does mirror a lot of the actual civil wars and uprisings that happened during this war of the rose time period you know, so yeah, I've got a confession to make, and and I I don't think anyone's here here watching at the moment, so it's it's okay for me to say it. But I started watching Game of Thrones because a friend of mine said that Joe Joe's here. He's he's going to be a witness. Hi Joe, I've missed you, buddy. <laughs> Hi Anita. So a friend of mine told me that there's lots of action and there's lots of nudity. So I was like, ooh. I'm going to go start, start watching this show. So four seasons later, I am so emotionally wrecked from watching this damn show that I, I can hardly function as a human being anymore. Yes, there's great violence and action. Yes, there's great nudity. But yeah, it yeah it also messes you up. It's, oh, it's, it's, a, 
Oh my God. That's half the fun though. It's political high fantasy. It's, oh, it's the families constantly fighting amongst each other within a setting that does include elements of magic and fantasy creatures. So you get that, that little extra fun along with some real serious political, you know, backstabbing and wars going on. See, and you know what? That's the part that I don't like. I don't like intrigue. I don't like it at all. Like, I would like it to be straightforward. Like, okay, it opens with uh, uh, Danny walking down into the pool, looking all extra sexy. She marries Cal Drogo. They ride over to, uh, oh, what the hell is it called anymore? What's the main land called? uh westeros yes they ride over to westeros somehow on like horse boats and they take over and they live peacefully and that that would have been really satisfying for me i would oh yeah yeah joe dude the red wedding man i mean i i think that most of us saw it coming because i don't watch things on time and it, it gets spoiled for me but you know i i don't know i i stopped watching after cersei didn't get killed for some of the things that she did. And I was like, oh, no, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm just hurting myself. I'm hurting my own. I'm hurting my soul. I really am. Also, she's not going to make it past this season. She's going to die. She's going to get her comeuppance. Just just watch. Well, this is the last season. So they. <laughs> it's got to yeah. <laughs> be the Shakespeare ending. Nobody's going to survive. <laughs> and I'm, you know what? I like those endings. I'm OK with that. But, you know, speaking speaking of these things, Joe, I'm. You know, I, I've been checking the mail every day and, you know, I, I'll even go to the post office and, and look in other people's P.O. boxes to see if something arrived maybe to them by mistake that was supposed to be for me. But I, I still haven't gotten anything from you. Um, so I just wanted wanted you to know that whatever you sent, it, it hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> just so you know, Joe. Yeah, just so you know. <laughs> so, so Katie had the idea to talk about... We were talking about creating characters or world building. What were we going to talk about today? We were going to talk about the different approaches to writing because it's not just pantser versus plotter. There's also how you put together the the world, how you envision it, how you piece together all the elements that pop into your head. And one person at the uh, the presentation today, she asked me, she's like, well, do you have to create like a world Bible when you're writing these stories? And is it something that that you um, that you build up before you write? And I said absolutely not. Writing is a messy thing, and for most people, even the plotters out there, they discover so many new things while they write that they kind of have to add to and then go back and make sure that they maintain continuity. So I kind of wanted to reach out to our audience and then you know talk amongst ourselves on figuring out the different approaches that we have and how we see writing. Yeah, you know, I wish. And I say this every novel that I wish that I had the wherewithal or the smarts to build a character encyclopedia or a, bi a book Bible, you know, going into it, because that is a big problem for me. I get to chapter 30 and all of a sudden I don't remember what color his or her hair is, or I don't remember if, you know, oh, they well, they got attacked by this animal back in chapter three what side of the face were their scars on and it's small things like that but those small things that i don't want to get wrong because it uh oh man joe joe you're cold brother you're so cold probably not cold it's cold here in michigan it's probably not cold wherever you are in canada i, I think but uh <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so that's a real problem for me. And and I'm actually at that point right now in a book where I'm like, crap, I, I don't know what happened three chapters ago. And but the act of of making these notes and creating these 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 character Bibles is just a lot more work on top of also being creative and writing the story. So it's kind of, you know, I, I know it's a division of labor kind of thing there, but I don't know that I could that it's something I can really do. Like, I feel like I need an assistant just to read behind me when I'm writing and make notes of, of the things that I say. But I, I love you too, Joe. I do. Uh, but what about you? I mean, do you, I know you're, you're a pantser. Do you, do you make character notes? Cause you give out character note, you give out character worksheets 
when you're doing your presentations, but do you actually do those when you're going into your writing? Do you fill those out? And Not in the same form that I give them out. And honestly, I created it because I need to start using it. So the ones that I hand out are probably more helpful than what I actually use myself. I'm, I'm kind of just the note taker. So as I'm writing in one Word document, I may have another Word document open where I'm just noting different character attributes or different things about the character that I need to remember for later on. And then I'm constantly referring back and forth to it. And it may not just be one Word document that I have by the end of a story project. I may have multiples plus notebooks with scribbles in it that I can no longer read because I can't read my own handwriting half the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like you, I would love to have that sort of ability to be able to compile everything and make it nice and neat and easily searchable. It just never happens. And my files on my computer look a complete mess. Usually by the end of a story, I have so many different files floating around. They may be in one location, but I have to search through three or four or five of them before I find the information I need. If I'm referring back for, let's say, book two or three to make sure I keep the continuity. Well, I want to show you something. I'm going to try to do this screen share thing, guys. Uh, so I'm going to click on this screen share. Add our Chrome extension to share your screen. Well, I guess that, wait, Chrome, add to Chrome. I wonder if it'll just do it like that. Now add you extension. use Scrivener, don't you? I just turn on sync. I don't know what that means. What What are you doing? What are you? I said, no, I don't want my bookmarks in history. I just want you to, to do it. Okay. All right. So I used to always only use Word. I, I never plot anything ever. But Scrivener is, oh, here we go, baby. Yes. All right. So bear with me, Katie. Okay. Because I, I'm, I'm getting this. You're in the broadcast. Everyone can see you. Um, okay. Can you see that, Katie? I can sort cool. of see it. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this larger so that uh, you can see what I'm talking about here. Okay. And I wonder if all I want. Can you zoom in on on where you are? Mm, no, I don't think I can zoom in any further. Okay. So here's what we've got going on here. This is this is a Scrivener pot project and. This is the, the first page of, of my new novel that, uh, that I'm working on here. And what I've done is I've separated this into scenes and given them all a name. So scene one is the nightmare, then the tornado, then the animal shelter. Um, and I've separated, separated them into scenes. That way I can go back to them when I need to. But the other cool thing about Scrivener is, so if I click down here, I've got the outline for the whole book. Like I said, I'm not an outliner, so I'm, I'm trying this out on, on a, a lot of recommendation. But where I think it might be good for you, Katie, is that you can attach any kind of file here in Scrivener. You can upload any kind of file. You can put it in a little research folder. You can attach a picture right to one of your one of your documents. You know, you can add a you know a a, a character bible, whatever it is, right in here, um, which I thought was was awesome. So I'm. I'm excited to be using this. Um, I wish I had more time to write and I was more organized, but I feel like this is a really good step in becoming more organized because instead of having those 10 different Microsoft Word files like you were talking about stuck in a, in a folder on your computer, um, I'm back or not. Can you see me now? Okay, here we go. So instead of having all these Microsoft Word files going on, I can have just one Scrivener project and it's all right there, easy for me to me to reach. So that way, once I do start doing things like keep, keeping track of my characterization, um, it'll all be right there and easy for me. And I know that you are very against outlining, but I think that you would dig it. I think that you would like this program a lot. And there's like a 30 day free trial of it. And then after the free trial, it's like 40 bucks. I mean, Dude, it's, they need to have you be their sponsor. I mean, <laughs> you're selling it. <laughs> no. Well, I've, I've just been, I've been really impressed. I mean, that's my whole, my whole new podcast that I'm doing. I'm using a Scrivener project for it all because I've got a folder that has a list of all the, the guests I've had on. 
got a no- another folder that's got all the show notes from all those guests and i've got another folder that's got pictures of all the guests and links to all their all their various places so it's like man it's all right there i don't have to hunt for it and although i did have to write uh, christy stratus today because the picture i had for her was like teeny teeny tiny pixels so i had to get a new one but I, I'm I'm impressed. I'm digging it, and I really feel like you'd like it if you gave it a shot. I'm gonna I do. have to look into it. I'm I'm so like that old school. You know, I can't teach an old dog new tricks. Where I'm comfortable using. Are you computer. using a computer? Yes, of course. You're not old school, honey. <laughs> if you're on a typewriter, then maybe you'd be old school. You can do this. Uh, I will see. I will see. Okay, out of you guys listening in the audience here. Who all have has used Scrivener before? And would you recommend it as highly as Jason here is attempting to sell sell me on the product? <laughs> I just want you to try it. It's it's yeah. it's, it's really cool. <laughs> you know, I I don't doubt it. A lot of people say that they love Scrivener, and then there's a lot of people who say there's a big learning curve to it, which that's usually where I hit the snag because I don't want to have to learn new software right now well, to write yeah. a book when I know I can just write in Word. You know, here's the thing. I didn't think there was any kind of learning curve. I mean, there's is there's like a, a tutorial that you that you do right at the at the beginning when you first open the program that says this is how you create new files and boom, that's that's it. You hit the little plus button and it makes a new it makes a new file for you. It's super easy. There is a downside. Dun, 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 dun. The downside is this. What does every editor use? for making corrections to get back to the author. Track changes. In Microsoft Word. So yep. you have to have both programs in this in this game. I mean, I you could attempt to use Google Docs, but I you know I, I would not recommend that. Um, but yeah, so you you really have to have both. But what you do at the end of your novel, you export it from Scrivener and it exports as a Word document. So then you go from there. But that was my that was my one hang up is like, you know, you don't have the track changing track, track changes. And that's that's really where it's at. But, now, so, does yeah. Scrivener export as different chapters or does Scrivener export as one complete document? Uh, you can set it up to export however you want, but I will export as one complete document. Um, unless I'm doing stuff, you know, sending three chapters to beta readers or something like that. Um, okay. But yeah, yeah. So I'm geeked about it. I still use I use Word all the time when I just need to open something up and make a note about somebody or something. And it's just, it's easy to, to click Word because that's what I've always done. Yeah, Google Docs is not bad. Um, I feel like it's just not as refined as micro, Microsoft Word when it, when it comes to track changes. Um, I feel like there's been a number of times where I've uh, exported out of Google Docs to to finalize everything in Word to get over to the editor and things weren't the way they should have been. Um, but if you're doing like an online writing project with somebody, you know, if Katie, Katie and I were doing a writing project together, we'd 100 percent be using Google Docs um, because it's I mean, that's a no brainer. Um, it's just easy to do. Use Docs with Keep, and you have a cool storyboard. I'm not sure with Keep. Yeah, what Keep is. is it like the Dragon's Keep? Yes, the Dragon's Keep of writing. Like the dragon is hoarding your writing, laying over it, like Joe yeah. laying over a hardcover copy of his books, <laughs> not sending it to Jason. Oh, <laughs> oh! Somebody sounds bitter right now. I'm not gonna say oh. names. Jason, <laughs> uh, right. and I'm I'm actually about to start uh, Tamer Animals. Uh, Justin Woodward, you know, we've had him on Spelling Inc. a couple times, yes, yes. and uh, I, I just downloaded the audio book today, so I'm geeked to start it because it's supposed to be. I mean, it just keeps getting so many amazing reviews. And I was talking to him today, and he was telling me about more accolades that are secret and I can't I can't talk about. But I'm just like, hell yeah, man! I. I'm actually going to have to read this now because it sounds awesome. Okay. Yeah. It, I remember when he brought his book on the first time, the cover was really awesome. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm you know, that whole don't judge a book by its cover. We all do. Oh, and yeah. I really, really liked his cover. So that's, that's that's on the radar. I just haven't gotten around to it. Most of what I'm reading right now is beta reading. And I've got two I'm supposed to get done this week. Ooh. So I really need to do that. Sorry, yeah. authors. Beta reading is is not that fun. It, it it it's just it's not pleasure reading 
Beta reading no, is not pleasure reading. reading, you know, because you're 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 doing a job for someone. Even if we love you, Google Keep is about oh, fine. I'm gonna have to get into Google Keep tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I, I had no idea that existed, so now I'm going to have to check it out. And now I oh. might this might this might change how I feel about Scrivener altogether. Google Keep. Oh. This may, this may be it. You're going to have to give us a full report then, Jason. After you, you've tested it out. You know how good I am at those full reports and everything like that, Katie. I know. I'm <laughs> for your Comic Con review. <laughs> Was I supposed to do? Oh, that's too late now. That's that's old news. <laughs> I was so tired after that. Oh my God. There was like a hundred hours of video, not a hundred hours, but I mean, there was like a couple hours of video to edit. It was a lot of work. And just wait till you go to Phoenix with us. I'm so excited for Phoenix. I think you're going to have a blast. You know, I think so too. This whole selling books shit is really getting in, in the way of my fun. <laughs> it, I'm not kidding. The, the whole, I've got to apply for tax licenses and shit. No, no. Damn it. That's the job of the freaking convention. Do your job. We're paying you to be there. Oh, it, I made a list there about making a list. Oh, Joe, man, you could not get sexier than you are right now, Joe. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I'm serious. But no, so I'm I'm frustrated about that because I don't know how to fill out the forms. Maybe Heather will help me. And then it's like, damn it, when I and I and I broke because I spent all my money at Christmas. <laughs> so it's like I gotta find a way to order in books here for free somehow. Bring sunscreen, Lavelle. Hell yeah, man. I'm just I'm just gonna be laying out on the roof all day while Katie's selling all these books because Katie has got the chops to do it. Katie would be like, hey you in that Mothman costume. I love Mothman. Let me talk to you about it. Now that hey. is exactly what I do too. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a book about moths and lamps. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no, we speaking of that, we've got to put together our cosplay bingo sheet. That will make for a lot of fun. I, I spend most of my time at Comic-Con instead of selling the books, because I don't really like to do, just like Jason said, I don't want to sell the books. I do want to sell them, but I don't want to be that used car salesman. So my approach at Comic-Cons is always guessing the costume if I'm not quite sure about it or appreciating the costume that comes by very loudly and then getting pictures. <laughs> That's how I drop people into the table. Uh, my my trick is that I'm going to wear some kind of extremely revealing cosplay. Yeah, I mean, and I'm going to be super hot. I've just got to figure out who it's going to be. But, I mean, I want to show as much skin as possible to really draw people into the booth because they're going to be like, man, I got to be a part of this. And, oh, and look, there's books there, too. I might as well just give these guys my money. Like, there we go. All I right. mean, that's, that's pretty much how it works. I, I, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. No, what I think that we should be focusing on is not cosplay bingo. I think what we should be focusing on is what our group is going to do as a cosplay. Oh yeah, we had talked about being the Guardians of the Galaxy at one point, and uh, Jason, you could easily be Star Lord. You you keep saying this, but I don't know that you've actually seen a Guardians of the Galaxy movie with Star Lord in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't exactly look like a, a star. I look more like a Drax than a Star Lord. I, <laughs> Drax too. I, I could see that. His completely inappropriate humor. I could totally. Uh, <laughs> I've been nominated as Rocket Raccoon. Oh, yes. Well, and I stand by that. I'm not the one that nominated you, but the person who did is a hero, a damn hero. <laughs> so basically, uh, I just get to run around shouting and being pissed off at everything all day. Which Hey, that, that pretty much fits. Yes, give you a margarita and <laughs> Joe, I think that uh I think that Phoenix is the end of May, May 26th, 27th, 28th, it's, something it's like Memorial that. Memorial weekend, yeah. And okay. Phoenix four days. So it goes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, now that I've got you. So should I fly in on Wednesday then, or will nobody be in town? Uh Wednesday is the day that we'll be driving in. Typically, when we drive in, we leave first thing in the morning, and we get there sometime around one or two in the afternoon, and we go straight to the convention hall. So consider that if you're flying in on Wednesday, if you need rides or anything, we won't be in until about two o'clock. Okay. And then you guys tear down on Sundays, right? Yeah. Oh, Sunday's the worst. Okay. So I need to leave Saturday night then, probably. No, <laughs> I'm telling you, we leave Monday for a reason, because after tear down, we are all beat to hell. 
because you've had a whole day worth of being at the convention. Then you have all the time to tear down, however late that takes us. I think we were done by 10 p.m. last or last year. What? And then you, you have to unwind. So we go out and we have drinks, and then you just fall face face full face forward into the mattress, and you're done. You're useless. <laughs> and we're all bunking together, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, air mattresses all over the hotel room. Hey, we got to save money where we can, man. Right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's uh, Sunday is not the day you want to try and, and have like, hey, I have to get to the airport at a certain time because it could take a while for teardown. It could be quick. You never know. And usually you are extremely exhausted by the end of it and you just want to crash. Okay. All right. And we're going to be doing amazing panels while we're there too, right? That's the hope. And we have to find a way to snag John Barrowman for an interview and you have to wear a kilt when you interview him. Yes. Well, I, I feel like I have a whole lot of uh, pressure going on my wardrobe choices here <laughs> this time around. <laughs> I bet I bet Jenna has a kilt. She seems like she would have a kilt that I could borrow. I don't know. You have to ask her. And, and mm. she's been sending out emails. You can tell she's excited about this. Yeah. Because she's the one who kind of acts as our, our mother hen, our organizer, and we just listen and, and do whatever she tells us. <laughs> uh, so, Joe, are you going to come out and visit us in Phoenix? That would be awesome. It would be cool. Where is Joe? Is Joe in, like, Hollywood or something? No, he's in, like, Northern California, I think. Okay. Right, Joe? Northern California? Where Where is Hollywood? Southern California. Oh. And that's a long ways away, right? Northern oh, and Southern. Huge. Okay. It's it's very big. <laughs> right. Is it like eight hours driving big kind of thing? or I think more. Jenna drives to Vegas every year. She's in Central California, so near the San Francisco area. And she, I think, takes between eight and ten hours to get to Vegas. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's wild. That's wild. So what were we talking about? <laughs> Oh, we were talking about differences in writing and stuff, right? Oh, Anita's got a kilt for you. Oh, come on. I, I, I bet that it would fit around like one leg, maybe. I could do around one leg. Northern California, Hollywood is six hours away. Wow, that's a long one. That is kind of big state, isn't it? It is. It's long. It's yeah. a very long state. Well, anyway, I, I am I am really excited about Phoenix. I think it's going to be – I'm more excited to go and hang out with you guys than I am to do the the working and book stuff. You know, I don't know. I Honestly, I'd rather come with a couple cases of books and give them to people because, I don't know, I just don't – I don't sell stuff. I don't sell stuff well at all. See, and that's I the thing. I, I kind of started off having to be sell, 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 make my booth fee and all that stuff. And then in the last couple of years, I've really just relaxed on it. And you have more fun when you're interacting, which is, like I said, I yell at people. I appreciate their costumes. I go take pictures with them because that's more fun. That's more engaging. And it does result in some sales. And if I can sell enough to make my table fee, I'm usually happy. But the interaction is what makes it the most fun event. And that's why I call it my working vacation, because, yes, I am trying to sell books. But I'm also spending four days with friends, having a great time, having drinks, being silly, dressing up. You know, it's it's a lot of fun. Can we drink while we're there on the job? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Jacob. So Jacob's going to be there. Yes, he's that. awesome. He's, uh, I've worked with him a couple of different times. We actually first ran into him at Phoenix. We kind of knew each other online. But we ran into each other the first time at Phoenix, and then I went and did Tucson Comic Con with him, and he's joining us again for Phoenix this year. That's cool. So we've got you, me, Jacob, Jenna. Wasn't there one other person that was thinking about joining? He lives in Phoenix, and he will come hang out with us, but I don't think he's going to be at the booth. Is that Mike? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. No David, though? No David. I haven't heard from David in a while. I hope he's doing all right. He's yeah, probably yeah. as busy with uh, filmmaking because that's his deal. Yeah, I haven't heard from him in a while either, and I'd I'd really like to to learn more about his filmmaking projects. They seem like they were they were really cool. So, um, yeah, he should get he should connect with um, Tim Chismar. They'd have a fun time hanging out. I think probably because you know 
Tim's the horror screenwriter and, and David likes, you know, filming crazy horror stuff. So that'd be, that'd be a good, good match. Match made in heaven. I love yes, that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> They could go to like nudist camps together and stuff. Cause that's like, that's <laughs> <laughs> late birth. Ooh, that's going to be oh, on their God. flagship show. Oh, is it, is it you without a top on Joe? Ooh, please. So listen, I didn't realize that you were also an Aquarius. I am. Are you oh, an Aquarius? Yeah. Yes. Really? Yes. My birthday is January 25th. No shit. Oh, yeah. wait, we passed your birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday to you, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and, and you know, you know what? One of the cool things about being an Aquarius, um, and it's, it really says something about us, is that uh, we aren't on any of those lists of serial killers and their horror and their um, horoscopes, their uh, <laughs> astrological signs. There are no Aquarii on there because we're good people. My favorite on those lists is like, uh, how would the, the Aquarius handle the end of the world? And then it's like the Aquarius daydreams and actually gets bit by something because they're just off in La La Land to begin with. <laughs> yes, like, yeah, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I will wait with bated breath, Joe. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, phrases, too, because I want to know where that phrase came from, bated breath. I also would like to know where where the word puba comes from. So bated breath and puba. If someone wants to educate me, that's fine. I'm I'm here for it. So Katie, do you listen to any other podcast besides uh, besides ours and the Raven, my new podcast? Uh, not officially podcast. I'm one of those people who turns YouTube on hmm. on to different channels and just lets it run while I'm working. And so okay. I listen to a lot of uh, like screen junkies. I'll listen to the Nerdist. I'll listen to. Um, I was listening to different parts of Geek and Sundry for a while, but I just I I'm not actively paying attention. But it's that good background noise that I can yeah. occasionally go. Oh, that's interesting, and then okay. go back to work. Okay. Well, I I have a gift for all of you here, which, as far as I know, is you and I, Katie, also Joe, and, and Anita. And, and Anita, yes. So if there's anyone else that I've missed, it's it's only because you haven't commented. But this is a gift for you all. Two podcasts for you to, to check out. The first is called Dr. Death. Very easy to remember. And it is a docu-series, uh, six-episode documentary series um, about a neurosurgeon in Texas. Um, and it's it's all real. And it's extremely disturbing, but it's put together. I mean, it's this is high production value po podcast. Um, so it's extremely well put together and it's addicting. Like you listen to one and they're just already hitting play on the next and you really can't control that. Uh, but so Dr. Death, amazing for something really, really morbid. And then also the ladies who turned me on to Dr. Death, which is which is the show My Favorite Murder. And that's another one that started a couple years ago. And it's these these two ladies that are, get on and they're bullshitting around like you and I do for, you know, an, a half an hour. And then they each talk about, you know, their their favorite murderer of of the of that week. And it's it sounds ridiculous. And when you listen to it, you'll understand why I love it so much, because these these ladies are very irreverent. They're cussing all the time. And the story they tell these stories so well uh, that I'm like, oh, my God, I just I love it. And so it sounds terrible, but it is funny as hell. It's like the funniest murder podcast you'll ever hear. So okay. I don't know why I got. Well, you know what? And yeah, Katie, Joe yes, makes a very do, good actually. point. I yeah. know I do. And I didn't want to interrupt Jason's point to to say that. Yes, I do. And in fact, Joe, I missed your live broadcast on the YouTube information that you had learned, but I did watch it later. And actually, I had it playing on repeat a couple of times while I was working the other day, putting together my presentation because I wanted to listen a little bit more actively, but I didn't have enough time to actually be there. So, yes, I do listen to Go Indie now. Um, and I do like, like I said, I put it on while I'm working so that it's there. Joe, she did once confess to me that she didn't even know what Go Indie Now was. Uh, so I, I don't know. There's that. Wait, bated breath. Wait, go, get back up there. <laughs> there we go. Abated breath. What? Well, what does that mean? Abated breath. 
Is that to, to not that made have it like, like, like a held breath? breath? Yeah, I think so. It's time to go, Wendy, now. <gasps> Jane is here. Jane. Jane's here. Hello, Jane. I didn't know if you were awake. Hi. You want to come on, Jane? <laughs> are, you, are you still in South Carolina enjoying the nice weather? Hopefully. It's so weird talking and then not having an answer immediately right there. I wish that. <laughs> not I a wish telephone, that... <laughs> Jason. <laughs> uh, I, I th would have so much fun if all of us show producers could somehow get together for, I mean, even if it's at a convention and we're all just on the, make this grand Pooba is a term derived from the name of the haughty character Pooba and Gilbert and Sullivan's the Mikado. Anita, you are uh, very, very smart. Very, very smart. Thank you. Thank you. So this is, this is an official call out to our friends out there. Um, Josh Pantelaresco, Joe Compton. Um, oh, who's the the super sexy guy? Steve somebody. Steve, Steve. Collier. Collier. Steve Collier. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's super sexy. Um, Christy Stratus. Who am I? Who am I not saying? Because there's somebody we were just. I was just thinking of. Who's our other podcast friend? Oh dang it! Uh, did you say Joshua Robertson? No, Joshua Robinson. Yes, 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 yes. But I want us all to meet up at a convention and and just have a we don't even need to sell shit. We can just have our own little we can have our own little panel of of producers that we just bullshit about being producers the whole time. I think I would have so much fun with you guys. I really would. Um, because we work with so many cool people. We would derail ourselves so many times, though. <laughs> I don't think we'd actually get anything done. That could be the oh, that could be the whole idea. You're waiting with derailment breath. Derailment breath. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like the uh, more distracted version of uh, abated breath. Man, is that really what that means? Abated breath. Wow. It must be. No kidding. I, I trust Anita. Okay, yeah, I trust her too. You know, I. I have no clue what I look like. Oh, look in a mirror, honey. It's okay. Hey, there she Hi. is. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Uh, hello. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> look, that's Jane, everybody. Oh, wait a second. Yay. I'm way off to the side. I'm going to have to. Uh, I can turn towards the light. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. I'll come on over here. Joe, do you want to get on here, too? We've got room. We've got room for one more slice. Oh, <gasps> producer karaoke. Yes. Yeah, although that's not going to be fair to you guys because I I will I will crush you all. Oh, yes. you don't want to hear me sing. It's not a, it's not a pretty thing. I mean, I'll do it, but you don't want to hear don't it. Sing, you're singing. <laughs> Jane, I was just editing uh your uh your story the other we're day. Like, oh my god, I'm like nap head. <laughs> oh, you like? Were you just taking a nap? Yes. Oh I sort my of god. Like zoned out and, <laughs> and I was I, like. I am I so thought, jealous. Well, you know, <laughs> it's been a long <laughs> couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I yeah, can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh goodness! Yeah, my, goodness. Sis my sister went to bed. She just flew in, so you know, I've got I've got relief. So that's good. <laughs> now, are you heading home? You said next week. Tuesday. 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 Tuesday I go back into the freezing zone. I don't want to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't blame you, hon. It's, oh my God, it's so bad. We're up to, uh, I think we're at 12 snow days right now. Wow. It, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. So Jane, we were just discussing, um, what are some of the podcasts you listen to or watch? Um, <laughs> you're asking me this now. Um, <laughs> I just woke I'm, up. Yes, I just woke up and I have to think, oh my God. Um, I listened to some of John Mayberry's podcast with the three bearded men who's that um, oh, that's good yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a good one yeah um but outside of that i don't listen to a lot of podcasts have you ever heard of uh go indie now yes i have for, <laughs> that's joe's <laughs> <laughs> i i've also heard that that uh, joe writes books though i i haven't seen any evidence of that uh yeah wow. at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for some feedback from Katie. <laughs> I, oh, no. I told you she, 
Did you not hear me say I have two beta reads due this week? See? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is is this the your joint project or or no, we're, no. we're on hold right now because basically we both have to be in the right mind frame to do this, and neither of us has had a few minutes of peace. I think. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get in a the co writing mind frame too. I'm supposed to be writing with a gal for an anthology and. Um, we had a plan and then she sent me like the first two chapters and it was not part of the plan at all. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? I mean, I mean, I, I am, I am not an organized man, but this is where this is, this is bad. <laughs> so I don't know how it's going to work out yet, but uh, I don't know, are you guys reading anything cool right now? Besides beta reading, are you doing it like for fun reading? Um, I have been li reading Lindsay Hall's, um, which one, which series is it? It's the um, Amazon one of her uh, like uh, dragon series. And I forget the name of the book. It escapes me right. See, I'm really not awake. <laughs> are you Are you drunk, Jane? No. no. That, that was supposed to be on Friday. We didn't do that. We're going to do that next week. Are you joining us, Jason? What? Drinks with authors next week? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Friday night. Friday night. I promise I'll look better than I do now. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter to me what you look like. I don't no, know that that'll that'll be a to be determined at at the moment. It all depends on what work looks like. I don't I know. Hear like, you. I hear uh, you. I I've been in tax hell this week because oh, yeah. you know I got to do the books every year for the business, and that just my brain explodes, and I'm still not done. And so I haven't even had my own computer this week because my mom is my accountant. Love okay. her for that. Thank God for that. But because all of the accounting software is on her computer, I have to borrow her computer to get all of the yearly input done. So I've been working off of her computer instead of mine, and I'm still not finished inputting everything for the year. Oh man, yeah. I haven't, I haven't even started. I don't started. want to talk about taxes. No, <laughs> no, no. That's that's bad news. No, thank, thankfully, my uh, oh, Trial of Stone by Andy Peliquin. You that's know, the other one, Andy Peliquin. Yes, I, I I actually don't know Andy, and I know you do. Could you tell me a little bit about Andy? Because his name keeps popping up everywhere. I don't actually know him either. I know of him through the circle of um, indie authors, and we all randomly appear on each other's shows, and he's been on those, and he's a very personable person. So he's um, he's one that you you remember once you've been on a show with him, but I don't actually okay. know him. He would okay. be one to get to know, though. Yeah. Yeah. We should. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll reach out to him and see if he wants to come in and, uh, and play with us sometime. Cause that'd be, that'd be fun. You know? <laughs> yeah. Cause like said, his name is always popping up on, on people's tags and on people's mentions. And like, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Got to get to know that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for the title of the book. Cause I bought it recently for the ride. I don't know. Ride down. <laughs> I would like to get some reading time, but not that I don't like doing the beta reads, but it is a different style of reading. You're not reading for pleasure. You're reading critically. You're looking for the problems rather than just appreciating the story. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. When I, fortunately, as for as part of the new show, he's delightful and a fabulous author. Wonderful. And, and that's kind of the, the vibe we're getting from him. So we're going to have to get in touch with him. But yeah, I've got to do all sorts of reading for uh, for my new show. So I, I'm, I'm actually, right. it's it's work. I mean, I'm calling it work. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's that's, that's wonderful. Work like me. <laughs> yes. So it, it's you know it's a good excuse for me to actually do a little bit of reading again, and I'm I'm really enjoying enjoying it. Uh, I, I was reading a uh, Station Eleven, and that's really good. And I'm going to start Tamer Animals, which hopefully is awesome. It sounds like it's going to be good and. And I've just got a whole big list of stuff for this summer. I'm I'm reading a uh, a book. Gosh, I wish I remember the name of it, but it's a it's a nonfiction book about. Uh, damn it! What is the name? Never mind. I'll scratch that. I I can't remember the name. But but anyhow, she's a uh, like a, a, a poet laureate that's coming into into Holland to speak at one of our colleges and I'm snagging her for an interview when she's in town. So I'm going to read her book um, before she gets here. I should probably know a little bit more about it uh, before she gets here, but um, <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be, that's going to be fun. And then Kada, you're Katie, Kada, Kada, you're in Beatty land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not really reading much these days though. I would like to, and I do still have to finish the game of Thrones series. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those ginormous books. We need to get you some more some more personal time. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> In fact, I, I'm pro- probably going to have people knocking down the door here in a minute because not only was I out all day today at the library, but I came home, grabbed a sandwich, and then ran to hide up in my bedroom to do the show. So <laughs> kids are probably wondering when, they, when they're when they going to see their mom ever again. Oh, well, that's all right. Just tell them mommy's on vacation. Yeah, right. they, oh, the you should have heard Zoe when I said I was going to go to Michigan. She's yeah. mad. She doesn't get to go. Uh-oh. This is the book I'm reading. Power, power of magic. Oh, I've yep. seen that book cover before. Yep. Yeah. I, it's. I, I've read almost cool. all of her dragon's gift books, and and this one. I mean, this I got for the flight, and it helped. You know, um, ease my mind a little, or take my mind off what I was coming down here for. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that book cover I've seen a couple of times. It's on my radar. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I, I started off by reading her first Dragon Gifts book, and I actually got one for a gift basket that I'm doing for um, the Pink Party, which is in March, that my daughter's doing in, in Rhode Island. She's the uh, planner for it, so <laughs> they're having a whole gala, I guess. <laughs> so I'm do- And I think I have one of your books, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you said you, you did pick up one over Christmas for that. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so I just did a book, candles, bath bombs. That's awesome. <laughs> That'd be a great book basket or a, a just prize basket. Yep, yep. So it's a raffle, so they get to raffle for it. So cool deal. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. should do something like that for Phoenix. We should make a, a book basket with all of our stuff and then raffle it off. Oh, yeah. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be, I'm, I'm down. Hey, is Katie, is all, are all your paper books on, uh, on Ingram or no? About half of them are right now. I want to move all of them over, but it's the whole ISBN issue. Some of my mm. books I do yeah. have the ISBNs for. Some of them I, I don't want to say I got lazy, but the budget wasn't there for me to purchase all the extras. So I just went, oh, Create Space will do it for me and I'll do that. So I do have to slowly move those over as I get more ISBNs. So when the budget permits, I can move the rest of them. But only okay. about half for right now through, through Ingram. Okay, because the uh, the library wants to order in copies of your books for distributing, mm-hmm. um, but they don't know whether to contact your publishing company um, or to try to get them off Ingram. And I told them that I that I would have to check with you. The two important series are through Ingram. So the Little Werewolf and the Asset series are all okay. through Ingram. Beautiful, beautiful. Other ones are kind of in limbo and question right now. But yeah, the, the two important ones, my two best sellers, are through Ingram at this point. Okay, wonderful. Well, I'll, I'll direct them to, to those ones then because um, they're going to want to order in. Man, I'm really setting up a lot of stuff with these with these guys. It's it's kind of turned into a, a lot more than it, it I initially thought it was going to. So oh, that's cool. Uh, that's kind uh, of the beauty though of the library system, especially if you have one that is willing to do that. We have the the two separate systems here in, in Vegas. Well, I actually live in Henderson. The Henderson library system, man, they are wonderful, community oriented. They're always willing to bring in new programs. They're willing to sell local author books. I mean, they just go out of their way to be accommodating to the community. Whereas the Vegas library system isn't, it's not that they don't wanna be accommodating, but they have so many more rules and regulations and stipulations that they say no a lot more than Henderson says yes. Mm. So it's a lot easier for me working with the Henderson libraries because they are definitely open to anything and everything. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, it's cool, it sounds like you've got one of those types of libraries. Yeah, I really, yeah, I kind of lucked out that it's going to be it's going to be a good relationship, I think. And I kind of I got a total control of of this summer. They said, hey, we've got this much money in our budget. Uh, go ahead and do your thing. I'm like, hell yeah, of course, we're flying in people. <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> now you've become not only the author producer, but now you're a talent coordinator as well. Oh, my Lord. Man, well, that, that part's hard work. I'll tell you what. I like talking to people and everything, but I don't want to do the numbers. So, <laughs> you know, 
Don't no, like it, it's it's it. awesome. I'm gonna the uh, the teen director wants to order in a bunch of copies of your of your books, and I mean it's a it's a it's a huge library. It's a it's a really nice place. So um, cool. I'm geeked about that. I think that you're gonna have just a ton of fun up here doing it. So and I I plan to bring it. I'm gonna create oh, yeah. a new program so that I can you know give them something worth my time for being there. You know I want them to be like, damn, she's good. I want to bring her back. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, for sure. And then, um, and we'll be able to get a lot of cool uh, promo shots of you, and and that way you can kind of use those for distributing to other places to to do your uh, uh, to do your workshops. And and it's just going to be cool. It'll be really I'm cool. So excited, so looking forward to it. And and I like I said before, I can't thank you enough, Jason. You've been very, very instrumental in not just working with me, but working with all kinds of authors to get more recognition out there. Oh, it's I'm I'm so geeked to be able to to do it. I mean, it, it was just a, a great opportunity and hopefully everybody enjoys the new show because that's kind of what the, the whole thing is is centered around doing it as a podcast. But um, so, yeah, if people enjoy it and then that'll open up opportunities for for more people to come and enjoy it. And yeah, that's just going to be it's going to be really great. So hopefully I'll we're putting my Heather and I are putting together um, packages right now to uh, to actually take the show on the road. Um you know, after this library event where we can hopefully get a lot of good reference references from them, unless I totally bomb it, which I, I don't, I don't foresee happening, but I, I mean, we, we never know. Um, but yeah, because I'd like to take it on the road and say, yeah, you know, for, you know, X amount of dollars, we'll, we'll come to your, to your show in the Midwest and we'll set up a panel right then and there. We can, we can even supply the, the, um, the topics if you want and you can have and, and this is this is kind of the, the selling point is not just the entertainment at the uh, convention or event itself, but that they will actually have access to those audio files to do what they want with, um, which I think will be a really cool thing because it's the the digital um, media is is really kind of the currency there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know I had fun on your the pod show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can't and I, wait, I can't wait to hear that one. Yep, yep. And yours, I think, I think is going to be April is when yours is going to okay. is going to air. Um, I was just editing it uh, the other day and it sounds great. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you sound as, as lovely as always. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I looked better that day. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the porch in the sunshine. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was an audio podcast, so we didn't get to see that. But, but you did turn on the video so I could see a view, which was phenomenal. Yes. Um, and yes. Katie, Katie, I would have you on the show, but you're coming up, and I'm I'm getting you on the show live, so that's going to be awesome. And we have to do that reading again. The, yes, the, I agree. That was a perfect scene to to work with. Yeah, and I, I think I want to talk to you about the audiobook because I've got that mm -hmm. other person that wants to narrate some of the characters. I think if we can figure out a way to make the multiple narrators work, that'd be yeah. really cool. Or not narrators, but multiple voices work. That would be yeah. cool. Yeah. And and I guess I was funny, I, I was just listening to an audiobook that was recommended to me that was that's for audiobook producers. Um and they talked a little bit about that. And while it's more work, it's definitely doable. I mean, yeah, we can we can make it work, I think. Cool. Well, let me yeah. know what I need to do on my end. I know I'm going to have to, to change the script a little bit to make it work for us, but I will do whatever I can on my end and coordinate with the other person who wants to add their voice to it. And I think we just need to do one of these video chats with, with the other person too and and talk about what we're doing. It's so cool. We should do that. <laughs> All right. I will get in touch with the other person and schedule a time. <laughs> See, now I get to be the talent scout or the, the talent coordinator. That's right. That's right. So, all right, well, <laughs> well I crashed the party late. <laughs> you you, you kind of you kind of you kind of did. <laughs> authors next week, and we have a lot of fun to talk about. Yes. <laughs> Life always yeah. gets in the way. <laughs> Who's next week? Um, actually next week we have drinks with authors and I forget who I have on the schedule. I know, please don't, don't hate me if you're listening and you are booked for next week. My little squirrel brain only goes so far, but we do have two shows booked that are going to be really cool coming up. I know awesome. that for a fact. I just don't remember who they are. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever they are, they're going to be awesome. No, no, they're good. They're good. I just 
can't remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> it's, right. it, it, it's been a long month and it's only halfway done. <laughs> oh my God, the shortest month of the year it has. What the hell's wrong with February? <laughs> oh, yeah. God, yeah, February sucks. Oh. <laughs> oh, and if I'm lucky, I'll finish the tax stuff this weekend. No, yes. shh, we don't talk about that in front of Jane. Yeah, I have to finish mine when I get home. Cause I, haven't even, I haven't even started it. Don't we have like two months left? Something like that? Oh, yeah. And and, and I'll be paying on the 15th. <laughs> 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 At the very last possible moment. Oh. <laughs> I'm hoping I, there's actually money coming back my way, which is why I'm trying to get it done. Because I do need to order books, too. And I'm like... Yeah. Completely broke. I know. Oh, looking at that's a right good now, point, Katie. Um, my my business did not have a good year, and did as far as I've seen so far is not in the black this year. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the government kind of, uh, you know, the new the new tax laws, which I didn't realize, accumulates taxes from property tax hmm. and state income tax all together for a, a oh, what, what do you know <sighs> and that was just like <gasps> <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> that, stupid that, taxes yeah that was that was <laughs> that was our biggest write-off last year <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm lucky I do have my mom as account as my accountant and she knows uh, that she has to be recertified every year so she knows all the current rules and everything but i've got to do my part which is to get the numbers for her and hopefully yep. she works the magic for me, God yes. help me. <laughs> yeah i nearly cried so <laughs> mm. Mm. well all right grand high pooba <laughs> are you ready to roll us out <laughs> I, yeah i think we're done we, we've kind of gone off the deep end as as per our usual so at least we're maintaining expectations yeah we covered a lot of important topics tonight expect that, or expect that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone for watching uh we will be back next friday with drinks with authors sorry we missed this week but we will be back next week with that and as always every saturday at 5 p.m pacific time we'll be here and whether or not we have a guest or not, the lovely Jason Lavelle will entertain you. <laughs> I sure will, guys. I, wait, where are we again? Wait, what we're is on this? Facebook right now. We, oh, we, Facebook. Oh, we're. Is this a show? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hi, guys. How are you tonight? <laughs> That's how I saw you. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> well, we have to remember to move it over to. to YouTube too. I don't think we did that last. Oh week. man, you, YouTube is out. YouTube's old news. See, I'm on YouTube. You're on the podcast, so we we both I think <laughs> have to do our jobs. All right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.